So, we're back on the new night map, Nivelle Knights. DICE has just released an update to the CTE, giving us access to this brand new map again. But there's a big difference this time. There have been a couple of updates. We're now playing Frontlines. This is the game mode. I thought this map would suit the best, and in my opinion, I was totally right. This map and this mode come together to create one of the best scenarios you can get right now in Battlefield 1. Adding front lines to this map fixes my main complaint I had when it was running Conquest. The map's fairly large area didn't suit the locations that DICE had built on it, and I felt it was like any other Conquest map really that's already available in the game. Groups of players zerging around the flags, large groups of people meeting up in the middle for a little bit, shooting some bullets, killing some people, and then moving on to the next flag as if that was the entire point of the game. Frontlines uses the trenches in a meaningful way and completely changes the pacing and the gameplay. In Frontlines, the central flag is in no man's land and it's separated by this raised roadway and bridge in the middle. It's like this anti-trench of sorts. It's tall enough that you can stand behind it and you can't see over it. So you can peek your head over and shoot at people on the other side. And that breaks up the line of sight and you can really use it as some solid cover. You need to fight in open ground essentially to take control of the center of this map. The objectives outside of No Man's Land, back within the trenches, they change quite dramatically. They use the physical trench lines as objectives. The thin, narrow passageways that lead to more open sections within the trenches, they actually act as the capture zones for the flag. So if you want to take the flag and hold on to it, you physically have to be within the trenches 90% of the time. And this pretty much creates trench warfare. This is exactly what the community asked for after the first update. And DICE have gone and implemented it, so big props to those guys for doing that. It means as you hold your ground inside the trenches, you've got waves of enemies pouring in over the top or from the sides because you can use the massively long trenches to flank in all the way around the enemy. You can take that flag away, you might get pushed back into no man's land, then back into the trenches again. It's a really, really cool implementation of the game mode. The trenches are now an integral part of the map and the game mode, and Frontlines works, in my opinion, very, very well. Now, you might think that this reliance on the trenches means that gameplay descends into a little bit of a sniper fest, but you'd be wrong. Because of the weapons on offer and the way that Battlefield 1 is inherently designed, it is a fast-paced first-person shooter, you can be just as effective at range with an SMG, or if you want to keep it really close quarters, you can use the shotguns and just stay in the trenches. You'll see I was having a lot of fun using the trench gun, which is appropriately named, and I was going on some absolutely devastating killstreaks with it. But the mode isn't without its drawbacks. The grenade and explosive spam in the trenches is extremely heavy. I don't think it's as bad as it's been on Fort DeVoe without the extended resupply times that we had when the DLC first dropped. It was really bad then, but it's still pretty heavy. The way this game mode is designed to work with the trenches on Nivelle Knights, you are effectively encouraged to fight within the trenches. Very claustrophobic area. An effective way to clear those trenches when you get a little bit stuck with two people either side of it is with grenades. The issue arises, however, when everyone throws their grenades all at once. Frontlines is a 16v16 mode, and even with those smaller numbers than what you have on Conquest, because of this smaller active play zone where all the players are in a, a much more condensed space, there are so many explosions going off all the time. Ammo 2.0 is active in this build of the game, so the only way for you to get your grenades back is to go to an ammo crate, but I didn't really feel that helped all that much because on the CTE I feel like the skill ceiling of players is a little bit higher and therefore people actually drop ammunition crates on the CTE. So everyone was getting their grenades back extremely quickly and then would just continue to throw them because it was a really effective way of being able to get the objective you were going for. I'm not really sure what DICE can do to solve this grenade spam problem because on the infantry-centric maps, there's not a huge amount of difference from what it used to be 
um, what it is now. On some of the larger maps, and having played this one on Conquest, the grenade spam is much less on that game mode. But because all the players are in one space, everyone is naturally going to throw their grenades in this tight, confined unit that it's an effective way to kill people. So I understand people continuing to throw grenades. The only way I can really see this issue being sort of put out on these infantry-centric maps is to adopt a method where you only get one grenade per life. But that's not really a very effective solution because you might throw it accidentally, you might throw it four minutes ago and you might still be alive. How is it fair that you don't get a grenade back from an ammo crate? It's a little bit of a conundrum and I guess that's why DICE have got people working on it to try and find out what they can really do about it. With all those explosions though does come screen shake and DICE have now implemented a new feature under advanced gameplay settings and it's called screen shake scaling. It's a new slider that can be used to increase if you really wanted to, or decrease the scaling that your screen wobbles when explosions go off. For me, this is arguably one of the best implementations into Battlefield 1 since the launch of the game. This not only makes the whole game feel much smoother, but it makes the grenade spam just that little bit more bearable on those worst maps. I've scaled mine to its lowest setting, which is 30%, and that now means I'm experiencing far less PTSD from my play sessions. Beyond that, there's not much to report change-wise. The map still looks very similar, although tweaks to the second trench line location on the German side is coming soon. DICE felt it was a little bit too open, and having experienced that trench during front lines, I can say that it did feel very open indeed, so it's nice to know they're already working on that. Something I will repeat that I said in my last video though, and this is another message to EA and DICE really, this map I believe should be free, accessible to all, and not locked behind a premium paywall. I really do feel, even at this early stage, that this map and mode combination is up the top of Battlefield 1 right now. It is a really, really good experience. But that whole experience will be marred if the decision is taken to make this a premium only offer. If you hold this map away from all of your player base, or at least the majority of it, you're sort of restricting that really, really cool experience. Please, please don't restrict this map to premium members and make it open for everybody. You've even got premium members within the CTE, which you need premium to access, saying within the in-game chat that this map should be for all players. You've created the stereotypical trench setting, one that people assumed you'd get with the base game, but they didn't, and you're planning to lock it behind a paywall. I really, really urge you to reconsider this choice. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of all this down below in the comments. I'll be down there reading as many as I can. And if you could leave a like as well today, that'd be awesome. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.